Today we are covering shooting. So you want to play better hockey. Just not being taught the way that you probably should be getting, but you're not, but you see these other players who are getting it and you're like, why can't I be like them? Well, this series is for you. I first started noticing that something was different with how I was taught to shoot versus how a lot of these other players were shooting when I was looking at Nikita Kucherov. And one of the clips was right here where he's uh, shooting in this little warm-up. And what I've noticed is that compared to what I was taught before, he actually doesn't get this his hands away from his body. Rather, they, especially if you look at this top hand here, it circles his body and stays pretty tight, only coming out maybe about six inches. It's not very much at, at all. Traditionally, what you would see with how shooting is taught is that the hands would be extended far away from the body. And as you can see when Kutrov is finishing his shot, but definitely his right elbow, his top hand elbow, is not fully extended like you would see represented by a lot of other coaches out there. So that cooed me in that something else is going on that makes him shoot like he does in games, as you'll see in this clip here, where, where even though this may initially look like a different shot, well, you'll see many similar motions, many similar biomechanical movements. So let's pick that apart real quick. So I noticed when I was first studying this and Jason Yee at Trade 2.0 was the first person to clue me in on something like this when he was studying it with his own trading logs, that you'll notice with Kucherov that his hips will turn a different direction when he releases the puck. So right now, let's say they're facing towards one of the advertising signs, maybe that Geico or that Florida Panther sign in the corner. When he releases it, especially after he releases it, especially in these frames right here, his hips start to twist towards the net, towards the BB and T sign, instead of being where they were to start. From right here to then right here. Over time as well, I also, I also started to notice that his upper body would shift, say from where you can see the numbers right here to where you no longer can't see that number eight on his back. So this clued me in that, hey, actually there's more rotation going on here than I was originally led to believe. Not to mention, look what happens with his footwork at the same time that his hips twist. It's the feet initiating the 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 hip twist and the shot instead of the hands initiating the, the shot, even though the hands are a lever. What you can think about with, with what I'm talking about here is that much like Train 2.0 calls this a slingshot, you can think of it as like a longer lever that coils and then uncoils or a spring that coils and then uncoils as these players are shooting rather than it being a push-pull action. So you can see, uh, in, especially in this clip, what, what we'll go back to in the warm-up shot, you, saw, you see the same shoulder twist, you see the same hip rotation, you see the same softening of the ankles, especially with this back leg with Kudrov's left leg as he shoots. And then even, even in this play, in this frame, You'll see this right elbow not fully extend like you would see when you, you were, say, cued to get your hands away from your body or to get your top hand out away from your body. So we can show a couple other examples, too, of exactly this. You can see a very similar hip rotation. Whether you want to call this a snap, of the hips or a, just a softening of the hips doesn't really matter. What matters is that now you can see the hips rotating. You can also see the upper body rotating. You can look at the logo. You can look at the collapsing of the left leg. You can look at the uh, right leg skidding forward a little bit. Like there, there's a lot more that's going on rather than the hands being away from the body, maybe like, oh, look at this frame. I want to posit to you that, I'm going to posit to you watching this. Is it that the top hand's coming out of the body 
or is it his top hand being, let's say, connected kinetically with his upper body, with his upper torso? Because if his hand was away from his body, like we were taught to shoot, to have our hands away from his body, why would his upper body be rotating at the same time that in these frames, like the, these frames specifically, if his hand was away from his body, would this mean that it should just be the hands? And and if there was and if there was just the hands, why does this upper body rotate right here? Synchronized, mind you, with his hands maybe going away or rotating around his torso. What I see happening is that it's actually the hand is synchronized with his upper body rotating. So this means that even though his hand looks like it's away from his body here, if we go back to the multiple angles paradox, what to look at in this case is what's happening with the upper chest and the shoulders and the connected tissue that's happening up there. Again, if it was just the hands doing the work, the upper body should not be rotating. It should just be the hands doing the work. If, if it was truly the case, there should be no movement with the upper body and you're seeing the upper body move at the same time that his top hand goes from where it is in all these frames. Everything is synchronized together. To expand on the multiple angles paradox a little bit more, this means that this is a distinctly different look on all of these frames. We cannot tell exactly let's say how far his hand is away from his chest or let's say his pec muscles or things like that. And this is, and the problem with this, if you just look at it from one angle is that you might end up missing where the chest rotates in all of these frames right here. So I would posit to you that actually the top hand is as close as it is right here the entire time. This is very hard to see at first if you don't know what to look for. But my point being is that it isn't that the top hand comes out, but that it rotates around his body in a tight arc. And that's what I teach in the rest of my shooting as well, that it's actually the footwork that leads up to your shot being a lot better and being way more effective. So you have multiple different shots, like we kind of detailed out with Kucherov just now. You have what, how exactly how Kucherov shoots, which is kind of a lazy shot if you really think about it. You have a style that Liney shoots, you have a style that Pedersen shoots, you have a style that you have a style that Ovechkin shoots, you have a style that Crosby shoots, you have a style that Bedard and Matthews have adopted really well too. Even though these are different players, the movement principles are exactly the same with both of them. You see the same exact upper body rotation that we saw with Kucherov. You see that with every single player, including someone as compact as Sidney Crosby, even, including with, you know, his very short stick. You will st still see the same upper body and lower body rotation with a Crosby. Otherwise, you shouldn't see his entire body move on every single shot that he takes and his entire body moves on every single shot he takes. Shooting is not done with the hands. I'm going to put that to bed, actually. That's just the physics of all these shots. Another thing to note is that a lot of the times, these players will be in a wide stance before they shoot. We go to someone like a Crosby, for instance. The amount of times that Sydney will get into a wide stance before he shoots, like, look at this. That's a, that's a tripod wide stance corkscrew. I thought we were supposed to skate in stride or shoot in stride or everything like that. Here's another example where he's wide and then takes a shot after that. Here's another example where he steps wide. Even though it's just a little chip or a snap or whatever you want to call it, wide stance again. Like the amount of times that these guys get into a wide stance, boom, right here. Wide stance, wide stance. By the way, look at the slow-mo replay. Like at the same time, here's what I'm talking about. Why is there this upper body rotation? Why is there this change with this with like knee positioning? Why is this like left leg extend and then this right leg bends 
and this like little little shift in his hips actually i'm going to circle this and post but it's like watch his hips they go from here to here at the same time that he shoots and then in the like full speed replay we backed it up enough it looks like this like why why does that happen with his with his hips if it's supposed to be just the hands we have to really think about this as shooting coaches and yeah, you can see like a softening of the ankle too. Like why does his ankle ankle bend increase on his left foot from here to here at the same time that he shoots? Like it's not just the hands. Like it, it can't be more clear than this. It cannot be more clear than this if you know what to look for. How is it just the hands? Anyway, enough of that rant. I'm going to get into some of my progressions. The first thing to know before getting into shooting is that you have to match the downhill skating system and the nine base fundamental mechanics there. And the reason for that is like I just showcased with the corkscrew. More often than not, especially if you look at it in very slow-mo detail, these players are not shooting in stride. They're instead getting into that wide corkscrew stance or they're shifting a little bit onto their outside edge after being in a wide stance and then they take their shot or they'll be in a wide starter stance and then take their shot. It's not that the setup for a shot is actually much more complex than just, oh yeah, just shoot in stride. It's like, well, that doesn't, that doesn't really explain it enough. The, but the easiest option is to get into a wide stance. After you've mastered the base fundamental mechanics with down the skating system, I then go into a little chip shot in tight to the net where you're just doing a little saucer pass as it's traditionally taught. We can see in the NHL that guys like Nathan McKinnon actually use this quite a bit on especially their breakaways and even their shootouts because they're, they're already skating quick enough and fast enough that, well, all they need to do is just not shoot it hard. But what that does is it actually unlocks all the slings and it gets you a better idea of what shooting is actually like, which is supposed to be a relaxed motion. You're supposed to be able to talk through while you're shooting. Next up in my progressions is anchor shots on both the backhand and the forehand. Now, if you know the anchor, you'll you'll know that you drag your edge in a wide stance and then it basically makes you turn laterally or in a circle however however long you hold it. And it increases your lateral deception. Many, 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 many NHLers, best NHLers do it all the time. I have people shoot out of that. There's a great clip from Eichel and many others, and even Crosby as well, who use that anchor to help guide their rotation to better aid their shot. So that's another easy variation that anyone can adapt. After that, I get into edge drags with adduction. So this means no pushing. It means instead that you're pulling the earth together before you shoot. Oftentimes, when players get into this wide stance, and especially with guys like Lyonnais or Caulfield, they will be in their wide stance, and then as they shoot, they will rotate so much that their hips will actually collapse together, and then they'll become narrow again after being in a wide stance. So it's almost like the wide stance ends up loading them to unleash their slay shot, and then as an after effect, they get into a narrow stance again. It's like, that's just the footwork that you can see them using. And if you're having if you're having trouble shooting hard on the ice, I would pause it to you. I would highly recommend that you try out getting into a wide stance like that and letting letting everything release, going from wide to narrow. Also to note is that what I teach with the top hand is centripetal force using the Crosby crevice. So what we've seen quite a bit, and what actually is showcased from like a PVC pipe if you're standing still, is that. If you rotate a certain way, very similar to how figure skaters operate this, and if your hands are away from your body, you will need what you could call a longer lever to then flex your stick. But if your hands are in tight to you, as you can see with all this film that I'm showing, it will be much easier to then flex your stick because as something else to note, the, the first thing to note, we've already established that these players are rotating. That's the first thing. The second thing is that 
what actually flexes the stick, if you look at it in slow-mo and if you understand these biomechanics, the puck flexes the stick. It's no downforce. It's not as much of a downforce, even though there's a little bit, even though there's a little bit of a downforce. If we did some studies to compare it to how much the, 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 the puck is flexing the stick compared to the, the player, I would, I'm pretty sure, I'm very sure actually, that it's the puck doing the flexing rather than just the flex down and pushing down into the ice. It's not, it would look distinctly different if you're pushing down into the ice. It would look more like a punch. These guys are not punching. They're whipping. They're whipping the, the stick around to, to shoot. So that's also what I teach. After that, I then get into what Bedard and Matthews have mastered with what is what a lot of people call the toe drag release, even though if you know that shooting is rotational and that the closer you pull the puck into your body, which just happens naturally if you're rotating while you shoot, the more power or more force you get and also as a byproduct you get to change the angle that is another you know advanced drill that i get into but also a very important one that obviously these best shooters like Bedar and matthews have mastered so well and that a lot of other players are adapting that's what i have players try out next also again you need that principle of going from wide to narrow at the same time that you shoot and this shot especially if you look at both those players they get what they get wide to narrow almost every single shot. Actually, it is every single shot, even if it doesn't have the big double width stance and then doesn't, you know, get as narrow as maybe it could have been. It's like doesn't have to do it all the time, but the principle is still the case that they add duct, they pull the ground together, which means you're going from wide to narrow on every single shot. My last progression in this little series is getting players to shoot off of all four edges. So what, what do I mean by that? Just to give you something that's ubiquitous between left-handed players and right-handed players, you have your blade side, the side that you're pointing your stick to. So for lefties, it would be this way. My right hand would be my top hand. And then for righties, it would be this way where the left hand is my top hand. On both, for the, for the righty, this would be my blade side. And then for the lefty, this would be my blade side. So it's like you have a ubiquitous language between both types of players. You also have your knob side. So it's in the side that the knob sticks out of, which means you have an inside edge for your blade side. You have an outside edge for your blade side. And then you have an inside edge for your knob side and then an outside edge for your knob side. You want to be able to shoot off of all four edges. And that's the last progression before we get into dense every minute on the minute shooting. So in my current programs, I have as a little finisher, in addition to stick handling, a 10 sets in 10 minute series for players to shoot. So it's just an, a variety of different advanced drills that we picked out here. This one specifically includes the shots off of all four edges. It may also include the the chip shot like we presented earlier it may also with the anchor shots the dense shooting is just about those basics once you're good with that i then progress players to dense shooting stacks so this combines a lot of mechanics together maybe you're doing the little stop in front of a tire and then doing a little soft drag kind of like caulfield does and then taking a shot after that or maybe you're going around a couple obstacles before you take a little chip shot like all of that gets into what is compiled in dense shooting stacks, which this series, along with dense mechanics matching, are designed to be a lot more in-game transferable. And to, to briefly discuss what the last progression is with dense mechanics matching, we literally take a flip of an NHL or in in-game, and then your aim is to match exactly what they do. And... When we look at this with shooting, we look at a clip of any type of any of our favorite players, and then we look to match their movements at exactly the same time that they execute them at exactly the same speed that they execute them. So that's the last progression there. So this was everything that I wish I knew about shooting that I wish I knew a lot sooner that I know now that I'm teaching you and the rest of my players.
If you'd like to get further coaching on this, please join my full year hockey hack system where we have access to a community forum. You have access to getting feedback from me directly. You have access to all my form videos and you have your entire year planned out. So be sure to check that out. I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.